Hello my friend, uh, if you thought four white rectangles was exciting, you wait for five text bits. <laughs> okay, we're going to look at the basics of type. We are going to not get into the weeds, not everything to do with type in this one video. We're going to get enough to get us going. A lot of stuff I'm not even going to explain because it's like how to boot an underline. Click the underline button. Okay, um, but we'll give the kind of the, the strange things for Adobe XD. And also note that we will get into the weeds with, um, uh, when I say weeds, <laughs> get into the details of type later on in the course. There's another video called, um, you know, font and text uh, level two later in the course where we get into a bit more detail. I just want to get us going quickly. And um, yeah, let's get into the introduction to text in this video. Okay, the type tool. It's this one here. Looks like a capital T. You knew that. Um, shortcuts in this course. Can you see if you hover above any of these tools? If you're using them quite often, you'll learn the shortcut. That T, can you see in the brackets there, is for the type tool. V is a really common one. Gets you back up to the selection tool here. Because V starts, because <laughs> select starts with V. Okay, but some of them are a little bit more R for rectangle. And you know this is going to be circle. No, it'll be ellipse. <laughs> e for ellipse. So T for the type tool. Uh, there's two ways of putting in text boxes. Click once and you'll get a box that goes on forever. Okay, uh, if you go back to the type tool and click out and drag a box down here, um, that you know, if you click and drag the box, it's got what's called a fixed width. Okay, and it means that when I type, uh, you know, it'll break and move down to the next line. Good for paragraph text. Okay, you know, lots of copy, and this is good for generic stuff. Buttons and buttons. <laughs> we do lots of buttons. You can switch them. You've got to select the box first. So grab your selection tool. Okay, click on the box once. Okay, and you can say actually you are now uh, auto width. Okay, and now when I start typing in it, uh, it'll go on forever. Okay, same with this one uh, over here. Okay, select it with your selection tool. Click on this guy and say actually now you are fixed height or auto height sorry and it means that uh, it'll yeah it'll get to the end and then break over okay so that's those two and uh, what we need now is we need a couple of things I'm gonna click on delete them I'm gonna grab my T for my type tool I'm gonna click once and we're gonna put in our kind of placeholder logo so we've got Scott actually I'm gonna do capitals Scott green T Okay, so type in your version, and what we're gonna do is go my section tool, move it up here. And um, when you are designing, especially if the company's new, they might not have a logo, um, just type it in, you know, have a just a text version. Don't be half trying to design it at this stage. The other thing is if you do have a, you know, the company already has a logo, just try and use a black and white version of it, okay, so that you're not introducing color at this stage. Wireframes meant to be simple for testing, quick, no color. And speaking of that, you're not allowed to pick fonts either. <gasps> no fonts, but, <laughs> but I'm a designer, I wanna do fonts. You get to do fonts later on when we do our kind of high fidelity version, which we'll talk about later on. But at this stage, you want to take any sort of design out of it. It's about functionality for testing. Okay, so even if you really like brush script, you're not allowed to use it here. You've got to pick something simple. In terms of simple, mine's defaulted to Helvetica Nuke because I'm on a Mac. But something like, if you're unsure about like what's good looking generic, because Arial, I'm not even a fan of Helvetica. Don't tell anyone. I think I committed a designer sin, but Helvetica is boring. And um, Roboto, I know it's not that much <laughs> less boring, okay, but it's one of those, it's just a really good uh, font to use for wireframes or for anything, any sort of body copy. It's clear, it's very accessible, it is free. If you don't have it on your computer now, you can go download it. It's the new Arial, but it's, I don't know, I like it better. Other good ones are Open Sans, is a really common kind of generic um, font. Uh, Open Sans, Source Sans, Source Sans Pro, all of these can be found online. I'm pretty sure they're all free. Okay, you'll be able to download them from somewhere. And they're just a good way to, I don't know, take a, what you don't want to do when you start doing this, you testing your wireframes, which you'll do really quickly at the beginning, is you don't want, especially when you go to a client and they're like, oh, it's not the corporate font, or hey, we can't use that, or if you've added character to the fonts at this stage, you can end up in conversations with the client about, what kinds of fonts, you know, this is not the right kind of one, um, and it'll take away your time for being fast. So keep it simple, pick just one font. You have one font limit, you can play around with the weight, okay, and that is to do with down here. So semi-bold, bold, black. Okay, that's why I like Roboto. Roboto, let's have a look. Um, Roboto is really handy for 
Ba -ba. It's got lots of these and you can actually get more to Roboto as well. Open Sans is a pretty decent one as well. Okay, in terms of italics, and thins and thicks and mediums. <laughs> I'm saying don't pick fonts and hear me uh, kind of going after um, different fonts and their different weights anyway. So put your um, uh, title at the top. I'm going to pick Roboto for my one. Okay, you pick whatever you like. So I clicked once, okay, and I've got this one. I'm going to add another bit of text here and I'm going to make it a fixed width because this is going to be my marketing message and I want it to kind of sit within this space. Okay, so I'm going to type in, this is my marketing. It remembers the last font you were using, so I'm going to have to change this. Okay, this is my marketing message. I'm going to select all the text, okay, drag a box around it. I'm going to go Roboto and I'm going to not go bold. I'm going to go to medium. Okay, and because it's, uh, I keep saying fixed width, it's called auto height. Okay, there's this other one called fixed size. I don't know, Adobe likes to call it different in different programs. So the second one in the auto height, okay, I'm going to, I'm not going to cover all things properly like font sizes here. You know how to pick a font size. I'm going to pick 48. That's too big. <laughs> pick 32. I'm going to center it. Okay, work your way through it. And um, the only things you might, the little icons kind of give it away. This one here is the space between letters. Okay, so if I open it up to 20, you can see the space between letters open up. I'm going to undo. Okay, this is your letting. Okay, all this line spacing. Okay, at the moment, I'm going to go to open it up a little bit. Okay, and this is the space after paragraphs. And we'll talk about this sort of stuff later on. And you can click these. They're not it's terribly hard. Underline. <laughs> Now the one thing you are picking fonts here is that you're not meant to be styling them, okay, even though I've gone and done a little bit, is you're picking sizes, okay, because, you know, this is my main marketing message. This one I maybe want to be a bit smaller, okay, I'm going to go down to 16, I'm going to make it bold, and I'm kind of making decisions now about how big this should be, and this has come down to legibility, you know, um, how easy is it to read, maybe accessibility issues. I'm going to say accessibility throughout this course. We don't cover it in a lot of detail, but it's kind of making sure that people can actually read it. Are the buttons big enough, okay? In this case, is this marketing message big enough? It totally is, but is it big enough in terms of getting my marketing message across? Now, you can spend a lot of time designing this, okay? Um, but what happens when I zoom out, you know, if you're designing this way, you're gonna end up picking font sizes at this size. Now, what you might think is go, I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna go 100%, perfect. This will depend on where it's being displayed. So if I pick up my phone here, you can't see me, but I've got my phone, I'm picking it up, putting it in front of my monitor now, and it's about twice too big, twice the size too big. So I know if I keep holding my phone up next to it, and I go Command minus or Control minus, that's about right. Okay, so when I'm making design choices now about is this big enough, um, I'm at least, you know, if I know I'm at 75%, I know I'm kind of close. Yours will be different. Yours might be at 100%. You might have to be a lot smaller. It depends on your settings on your monitor. Okay. What's really true though is you should be testing on the device. We're going to do that in this class as well. Not right now, but I'll show you how you can, um, you know, publish this to your phones. So you can actually make really good choices. We're just going to get it in the ballpark here. All right. A couple other things to get us going is if I copy and paste text, so I select it with my selection tool uh, on a Mac, Command C, Command V, okay, uh, or Control C, Control V on a PC. You'll notice that. It didn't really do anything, it did. There's two versions of it. There's Scott Green Tea there, there's Scott Green Tea there, but they're on top of each other, just so you know. It doesn't kind of put them off to the side. Okay, so this one here is going to be called uh, my product shot. Okay, I'm gonna have a picture up here. So we're using text as a placeholder for the moment, moving this down. You'll notice as well, A, this is centered, okay, because we did that earlier, left aligned, centered. You'll notice that in XD, whenever I drag anything around using my selection tool, can you see, oh, look at that. It really wants to be in the middle of the page or double middle of page. Super handy. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. Now I want two texts uh, down here for buttons. Okay, so instead of copy and pasting that same trick and uh, that we did for, I remember duplicating this. Who remembers what it was? That's right, you hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC when you're dragging something. Okay, and you can duplicate it at the same instance as moving it. So this one's going to be my uh, by now. Whoop, by now. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this out. And this one's going to be my learn more button. Whoa, having a bad day. Cool, all right. 
that'll be it for now. Other interesting things that are quite specific for uh, Adobe XD, I'm gonna zoom in. Let's look at, say, green tea up here. You've got this little white dot down the bottom. For a fixed, um, I keep calling it fixed width, it's called auto height, isn't it? Auto height box, remember? The one that kind of like breaks onto the next line. Okay, you don't have the same controls, kind of do. And um, this has four white dots, so you can kind of expand it out. This one, because we clicked once and is called a auto width, yeah, auto width, has one dot. And you're like, oh, what does that do? Uh, it does a couple of things. It's kind of a strange guy. Zoom in. Um, is I can drag it down, okay, and up, and it resizes it. Interesting. Instead of using this, you might just go, ooh, hello. There you go. Okay, the other thing it does is instead of clicking on it, okay, watch this. If I just move over there, so not there, there, can you see the little icon change? Too far, ride the magic spot. You can actually rotate it. You can do all of those things over here. You can just say, I need it to be 45 degrees and type it in, okay, or you can just be hovering up there, but there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's what it does. You can do it kind of down here, select on this one. If I drag the bottom, it doesn't do the size, but it does do the rotation. Here we go. All right, I promise not to get in the weeds in this one, and I got a little bit in the weeds, but here you go. All right, that's it for text. Let's get into the next video. Hi there, my name is Dan Scott. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to go further with Adobe XD, there is, I have a full course, there'll be a link in the description, it's called Adobe XD Essentials, there'll be a card up here you can click as well, uh, but yeah, carry on with your day, enjoy, and I might see you in the full course.